I'm about to do something I normally don't do, and that's talk about stuff I know absolutely nothing about. Want to know what that is? Coyote motors. I'm sitting here at John Cozzi Racing Engines in Winder, Georgia. My buddy Daniel Boshears has a customer for his business, Red Rocket Racing Engines, who wanted a 302 SID Coyote motor. And he didn't want the factory uh, Mustang GT intake manifold that comes on this crate engine. He wanted this, a Borla individual runner intake manifold. So what does one get when they drop $6,500 on an individual runner intake manifold? Well, if you buy from Borla, you're going to get a cast aluminum manifold. And if you look right here, that I'm told is the key to drivability. That right there is a massive plenum that connects every individual runner. Right there in the middle, map sensor and mount, high flow dash 10 fuel rails, billet aluminum housings for all of the 55 millimeter butterflies and there are eight of those things so do the math there the factory intake came with a single 80 millimeter throttle body high quality linkage built-in throttle position sensor i mean it's a bad piece it really is if you have the means after this dyno test i might highly recommend getting one we'll see how it runs this engine is rad uh, I've got the catalog here because, again, I don't know much about them and I've been reading it. 11 to 1 compression Molly pistons, manly H beam rods, Boss 302 parts all over this place from the valve springs to the bearings. A lot of stuff spec'd out for that awesome car. It is part number M 6007 A5ONAA, and they call it the 5 liter Coyote Illuminator NA crate engine, which is a mouthful. And nowhere on this page, 119, does it say how much power this engine should make. But if you flip to page 118 and you look at the 2015 Mustang 5 liter Coyote crate engine, according to Ford, it will produce 435 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque. I'm guessing at the crank. So today, we're going to find out what this makes with this intake. We're running this because this is a cable operated uh, throttle body system. We're gonna run this with an Holly Dominator EFI system. Cannot use the factory computer because it's set up for a drive-by wire deal. We're gonna learn a little bit about what this particular engine likes in terms of timing, uh, air fuel ratio, that sort of thing. And maybe I'll finally talk about how to read spark plugs. Maybe. We'll see how today goes. It was, uh... Let's talk about this engine. Because by looking at it and by perusing the phone here, Ford Racing's website, uh, first thing I noticed is that no matter which Illuminator engine you want to buy, when you flip through here, it's the same picture for all of them. So be careful, because it looks like this engine doesn't come with an intake manifold when in fact it does. So this is the A50NAA aluminum. Illuminator. It would have come with that bitchin adjustable runner intake yeah, manifold. Yeah, the IMRC uh, 2015 and newer intake manifold. Right. 80 millimeter drive by wire throttle body. We don't have any of that because the owner of this engine, after dropping $10,995 on it, dropped another $6,500 for this Borla individual masterpiece. I mean, it, it's nice. It's, it's very nice. This would not run with the factory ECU because it's drive by, not drive-by wire. Correct. It's cable operated. Cable operated. Okay. So which is where you come in. So come in. Robin works for Holly. Robin knows all about the HP and the Dominator EFI ECUs that work really well. And we're going to use the Dominator on this one, not only because it data logs and will run this and is great for power adders, but it will also control a transmission which I think he's putting an automatic behind this. Yeah, for our 70W or something like that. So, right. So. so well worth it. But in the end, you're talking 20 grand. So most human beings 
Look at this way. Might not ever achieve no, this. No push rods. Well, you get four camshafts. Okay, so let's divide. It's 20 grand divided by four camshafts. That's five grand a piece. That's right. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. It all makes sense now. That's right. So all those one cam engines are about 5,000. So it's, you know, it's math. Yeah. And I would listen to your math because your math equals... Almost eight second ETs in a naturally aspirated Copo Camaro. Say hello to Robin Lawrence, who just won himself a Wally. High five. Class Wally at the Gator Nationals. Yeah. And the air was unbelievable. Uh, the barometric pressure, the uh, humidity, and the track. The track was good. 908 at 146 and change. Wow. And, and it weighed, uh, across the scales, it weighed 3,045 pounds. Wow. Do you hear that, Coyote? Kind of a lot to live up to. Now, I, now I've got two coyotes myself. Oh, you do? And so you're not biased at all? Oh, no. No, no. I'll no. drive a Chevy and race a Chevy. And I've got uh, Daily Driver is a, a 2011 Mustang with 153,000 miles on it. So it's a coyote. It's got a Boss Intake. Okay. It's got some Holly uh, Hooker Blackheart headers on it. And then I'm putting together a 12 uh, stock eliminator coyote. Ah, so, so whatever dyno numbers we generate here today, folks, you can believe them because he's not just a Chevy guy. As far as you know. As far I'm, as you know. I'm wide open. So this is advertised um, as making 435 horsepower, 400 plus pound-feet of torque with 11 to 1 compression ratio. We have 93 octane pump gas in it. And you're going to work your magic, put a base map in it. And, uh, we did make 800 horsepower. So I put a poll on, on uh, Instagram. There's a short little video of this engine and I, and I asked people, how much is this going to make? And some guy, mountain something or other, actually said 900 horsepower. I love his optimism, I do, but it ain't happening. <laughs> hey Robin. Yes, sir. You're a guy with some disposable dollars in your bank account. You want 450-ish horsepower. You buy this engine. You buy that intake. You buy your EFI. Now you want to install it yourself. What do you got to know? Uh, basically, right now the Holly EFI is uh, does not have the VVT control, so you will have to uh, lock the cams at this point. Which I've heard takes about eight hours. Well, so. it depends on, on. I've done it myself, and, and yeah, I mean it, it, it is kind of a lengthy job. Uh, but basically, we have a plug-and-play harness. We have uh, uh, the coil harnesses. Uh, we have a, a coyote plug and play harnesses. We have different injector harnesses for the different style injectors, whether it's the EV6 style or the EV1 style. Um, the denominator, right now we're, we're running our plug and play harnesses. You know, we've got other ports for uh, drive-by wire, should somebody need that. The uh, transmission control, uh, inputs and outputs if they want a data log. So pretty much, uh, you know, pretty comprehensive, a lot of features in the, in the dominator, so. So once you've plugged in all the sensors, you're basically left with powering the unit, you know, directly to the battery, adding an ignition circuit, and. You got about four wires, five wires to hook up. Um, you know, pretty much throw a base tune in the ECU. Um, we will have a Coyote base tune in our software package uh, shortly down the road. Um, you know, we've, uh, we've already done some work with Borla on their stuff, so. You know, this is a uh, yeah, pretty standard operation. Uh, plug and play, start it up and go. So a guy off the street that doesn't have a shop um, buys this system and can talk to Holly Tech and probably get a base tune for pretty it? Much. Pretty much. And uh, once that happens, uh, in the car, start it up, uh, put it in learn mode, drive it, let it learn. You know, do a little bit of transferring uh, of the learn table to the base fuel map. And then uh, um, a little smoothing and, and life's good. You're good to go. Yeah. And on this deal, we're, we're playing on the dyno and we're playing with the different air fuel ratios and measuring horsepower, but it, we're running it in closed loop on the dyno and letting it hit its uh, target air fuel ratio. We're going to learn about what this engine likes and what it doesn't. And at the very least, I'm going to learn a little more about the Dominator uh, software because I sure could use a refresher. Right. I think it was Crusher Camaro last time you uh, were playing with the Dominator going down the highway. That was a long time ago. Well, it was a long time, <laughs> a long ago. time ago. <laughs> I'm getting old. All right, um, it's ready to run, right? You bet. All right, let's do this. It's alive. All right, what do you think it's gonna make? Four seventy-eight. Four seventy-eight. Robin, what do you think it's gonna make? Uh, 
480. 480? Woo! Chris, what do you think it's gonna make? It's gonna make 482. 482? I'm going price is right. I'm going one dollar. It's a good strategy. Alright, 483. <laughs> I didn't hear anything until it hit the chip. Oh yeah, 7,000. 7,000? Yeah, sorry. That was like eight. Yeah, cool. So we hit the rev limiter. So easy with computers, look at that. You don't like how it's running, push a button. You don't like how high you're revving it, push a button. Wow. <laughs> wow, see? Look at that. 493 horsepower at 6,900 RPM. It's a fair bit better than what the catalog said it would make. How much timing is in it now? 27 degrees. Yeah. 93 octane? Yes, sir. And what kind of water temp were you putting in it? Water temp is about 145. So it's water temp that it'll probably never see on the street. Yeah. So what advice would you give to a guy who gets his engine dyno at a place? Because that, that's standard operating procedure for every dyno I've ever been to, is to run the water temp cool. Anywhere from 110 to 140 degrees yeah. on a race deal. Right. So, but a guy operating on the street who's running 180 to 200 degrees, what would you tell him in terms of timing? What should you tell him knock it down to 160 to 180 degrees. Right. It wants to be fast. Yeah. You can program the Holly to as your intake air temperature goes up, your ambient, plus your engine temperature, you can go up and fine tune, and you, and you can do offsets in the O2 for the closed loop also. You know. So as the coolant temp rises, you can take timing out. So would that be a better strategy than, than, say it comes off the dyno at 26 degrees, then putting it in the car and automatically just taking time out from bottom to top, would you do that or would you just use the offset? Okay, the offset will give you your drivability during varying weather conditions. So, you know, it's cold outside, you're heading someplace, it's, you know, 45 degrees, it'll be 70 degree day. So you, you get a wide range of what you can let it adjust to. You know, it depends on what you're doing. Are you racing? Are you, are you racing and driving the street or just street driving? So, I mean, you can, you can infinitely adjust different parameters from your, your offsets on your air, offsets on your on your O2 sensor offsets on your coolant temperature to do just about anything you want. So, uh, you know, once the person becomes familiar with the software, you know, like most guys like tinkering with the stuff. Uh, you don't get your hands dirty. You don't have to touch a screwdriver. You just got a laptop and, and a little bit of driving, some data logging, mm -hmm. and some, uh, you, know, uh, you know, refine your, uh, your tune-up. Let's talk tuning. What are you targeting for air fuel at wide open? Uh, we're using pump gas, which, you know, we can put race fuel on this thing and, and, and bump the timing up and, and show some good numbers. But we use 93 octane pump gas, and uh, we targeted 12.7 to 1 air fuel ratio on, on the wide open poles. Obviously, things are different you know, on part throttle, but, um, you know, 12.7 to 1 with uh, a total of 28 degrees total timing. And uh, it seems happy. It's not falling off. At some point in time, we're not racing this thing. We've got to stop you know, finding horsepower. I mean, we could probably pick away at this thing and, you know, now that we're at 93, we could probably pick away at it and make another seven, but, you know, at, for what point? I mean, it's, uh, you know... It's we, going in a streetcar. It's going in a streetcar. It, it's going to have great throttle response. It's going to look cool. It's going to be dependable, reliable. You know, it run, it, the Holley Dominator will run his, uh, it'll run his transmission controller. Um, so, you know, it's a good deal. Cool.